On a Friday afternoon, I wasn't feeling great. I was having a little cramping and I thought, oh, it'll pass. And then on Saturday, it just got unbearable. I woke my husband up and said, I think we need to go to St. Agnes Emergency Room. The ER is the front door of the hospital. It's where nobody wants to go, but when you need to go, you need to have a safe place that you feel like you can get taken care of. Our ED was originally designed for about 40 to 50,000, and now we're approaching 90,000. We are number two in the state of California for EMS volume. And so we are there treating not only the acutely ill, but the patients that just don't have any other options. So once I got checked in and they got me into a bed and they ran a bunch of tests, we found out that it was my appendix. My ER doctor called Dr. Narahari and she came in and did surgery. Then when I met with her afterwards, she told me it was very serious. It had ruptured sometime probably that afternoon. And if I hadn't got the great care I got at St. Agnes, I might not be here today. The hospital has really stepped up to help us improve the flow, but it's kind of like the old farmhouse with the add-ons. And what happens is it's very linear and it doesn't flow very well. It's unfortunate patients are getting care in places that traditionally we would never want them to get care, such as the hallway in a chair. And sometimes patients can't even get into a room, not even leaving the waiting room. We have curtains. It really doesn't speak well for patient confidentiality. The other issue is the sheer number of behavioral health patients that we see. When I first started at St. Agnes, we would receive one behavioral health patient a month, and that was a big deal. We are now approaching sometimes 15 to 18 a day, especially with the fentanyl epidemic. Keeping them in, in an environment where there's lots of lights and sounds and so forth, it just doesn't really work well for them. We need to design a place in the ER for these patients. Another big change is that we have residents. We are teaching physicians now. It's great to have extra bodies, but these extra bodies are now in a very confined space. We would love to have everybody have a stretcher, have a space where they can be comfortable, but that's just not possible. We move around with little computers on wheels and we're shuffling patients back and forth. We are also physically moving patients ourselves. It's not real efficient. We need a new ED. We need to start from ground up. Re-innovating this ED is just not an option because of the sheer volume of patients that are coming through. We'll be able to get them in and out quicker. And we'll also be able to have an area that's just more aesthetically pleasing. Patients will feel like they are in a safer place. They'll feel like they're in a comforted place. They'll be able to be with their families. They'll all be centrally located with a provider and a team of providers and nurses and techs in one geographical area. And that'll make us a lot more efficient. We've talked to the staff about the remodel and they're extremely excited because they understand the constraints and what we can and cannot do in our space. It'll be less chaotic, it'll be more healing, it'll be more of an environment of health versus an environment of stress. In my experience, I haven't really spent much time in an emergency department, but at some point, a family member, a friend or somebody is gonna need it because it was amazing and saved my life. If we have an expanded, more modern ER, it's really gonna help serve the community. Mm -hmm.